Hi, this is Dave Phillippe with FabCAD, and I want to show you our railing drawing program, our horizontal rail program, and our stair rail program. So let me start with the horizontal rail program first. I'll click on that, and I'm going to import a template. So I'm just going to import an inch and a quarter tube rail. And you'll see across the top where you dimension the overall length, and you notice little arrows on the post, so you can work to the center of the post or the inside of the post, okay? You can, if you're attaching to a column or a wall, you can uncheck a post there. Bottom bar clearance is down here. Over here is our plate thickness. Now, if it's going to be core drilled, a negative number sets post below the floor. So if I put a minus four, this post would core drill down four inches. I got the overall height here at 42 inches. I can do pipe rails, cable rails, picket rails all kinds of rails. Neat little program. So I'm going to go next. And I have all my materials here so I can pick on it. i got all kinds of size tubings, different shapes and sizes, all kinds of different top bars. we got capping and channel, capping no channel, custom shapes, all kinds of rectangular bars, solid bars, you name it, we've got it. Posts, okay, all the, all the information is there. Vertical pickets, Four inch uh, maximum gap. You could do fixed spacing if you're using if you're using pre-punched channel. We've got specify odd or even number of pickets. So if you have a center snap-on design and you want to have an odd number of pickets to put it in the middle picket, it'll do that and not exceed four inches. You can also use spindles. Well, let me just add the spindles to it. So that's an automatic feature. It comes from our library. So. You have your end post connection here. You can butter cope it. There's elbows, there's miters. Uh, if you're using a wood look rail and you want the post to go through the top bar, you can specify that, put a ball cap on it. You can add ball caps to those. And then we have our post spacing here, which is either fixed, uh, maximum spacing here, 65 inches. If you check not applicable, then say for instance you're on a job site and the holes are already in the floor they've been core drilled but they're not even you can specify the post placement so that the post hits the holes and then each section between the post gets laid out to meet the parameters of whatever your picket spacing is so then I click draw and then on this one here since I added spindles I'm going to start with a picket and I'm going to put one spindle here and I'm going to pick this one right here and I'm going to left click and draw the railing. It's telling me that the spindle is too short, that it will lengthen it. It's good to know that if you have to do additional labor to make it work with the taller railing. So I click OK and it draws the railing and gives me the cut list just like that. It's got all my number of my pieces. That's the catalog number there. There's 18 of those spindles. Okay. I'm going to show you the stair rail program. So let's go back. Uh, let me uh, do that. So go to stair railing. Here I'm going to import a template. I'm going to import a masonry or wood step railing first. Click OK. And here I've got the diagonal measurement and the angle here. Diagonal, diagonal measurement and the angle. I can also do rise and run or I can do rise in seven, the slope here. So I'm going to do diagonal dimension and angle here. And I could do a lower landing. I could add a handrail to it here. And I could do that on this one. I put the, on this particular one, I tell it what, how far back I want the post to set because when a railing is setting on a masonry or a wood stair, if you evenly space all the posts, it may not hit the stair correctly. Now you have to tell it how many step treads there are, and it will automatically generate the risers. And it will prompt you to set the post four inches back, in this case, from the edge of the nose. So I'm just going to click Next. So here I'm just going to click Draw, pick a point. So it lays the stairs out, and then it asks me at the bottom, stair treads on which posts are to be placed. So I'm going to pick this tread right here and right click so it drops the post in it's asking me if I want a center post for the landing on this particular case I do not so I just right click again it draws the railing gives me the cut list with the angle cuts everything right there just like that 
Okay. If you have a steel stair, I'm going to click and I will import template and I'm going to pick a stair and stringer rail. So in this case here, it's going to draw the stringer line and the riser and tread line and actually lay out the stair for you. So this one's going to have a handrail. In this case, since it's setting on the stringer, I do have a maximum post spacing that I can give it here. So then I click Next and I have all my dimensions and all the different shapes and sizes. I click Draw, pick a point, and it draws the rail, gives me the cut list, and it just drops the, the posts in not to exceed 65 inches and it gives me my stringer line, riser, and tread line so you can design the rest of the stair stringer from there. We actually have a movie on YouTube called Using Auto Rail to Draw Steel Stairs so you may want to check that out. One other cool thing it does is it's got this command called Rail Wipeout when I pick this handrail literally sends it in front. The pickets are still there because you don't want to trim the pickets because you lose your data. So it just makes it look like like it's supposed to look, the handrail setting in front. Now if the handrail's on the back side, you'd wipe out the pickets and then it would show the handrail on the opposite side. So it's a neat little program. It'll really speed up your productivity when it comes to drawing horizontal and stair rails.